camera here. We are at the Cigar Shop in Cumming, Georgia. This is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite cigar lounges in the area. Now, Tim, the owner, we're gonna go ahead and go inside and meet with Tim. He's got a beautiful wine cellar, wonderful atmosphere. We've got the pool table. We're gonna go into the humidor, and he's gonna go ahead and show us around, show us some different blends, give us some information. So if you wouldn't mind, let's go ahead and come on in. Hey everyone, we're here in the cigar shop in Cumming, Georgia. We've got Tim here, the wonderful owner. Hey Tim, how are you? Tim is the owner of the cigar shop here where he's going to take us into the humidor. He's got amazing blends. He's going to give us some great information in regards to bloom and um, some different blends for those who are possibly new to the cigar smoking. I mean, he's also got a small little treat for us, which is his wine cellar in the back. Um, so stick with us and, and enjoy the show. everyone, we are in the cigar shop. We're in the humidor. Vanessa Texera here with Tim. Now, um, Tim, what um, exactly made you kind of build your humidor the way that you did? Well, I was in the industry a few years prior mm -hmm. to opening this, and I had seen a lot of the issues we had with inside of a humidor and the mistakes that were made. Uh, typically in Georgia, a lot of humidors are way too hot. And so I had to take that into account, uh, keeping the humidity correct all the time. I'm really anal retentive about that. Okay. Um, so the way I built it was the way I thought it should be built. Okay. Is there a particular temperature that the humidor needs to be set at? 70% humidity, 70 degrees. Okay. Is perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now what would happen if you go a little over, a little under? Uh, a little bit, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Okay. But, I mean, if you go under in humidity, you're going to have a little bit drier cigar cracking. You know, that's 2 to 4%, right? You start getting 65 and below, it's not good. Okay. If you start going above, you get uh, tobacco beetles. Okay, tobacco beetles. Now, you've got an awesome variety here um, of cigars. What makes you kind of choose um, what you kind of carry in the store here? Again, that's from time in the industry. I've been in the industry about 13 years. Okay. Um, mostly what my customers like. You know, the best cigar out there is the one my customer likes, not me. I do not right. choose my inventory from my personal, uh, what I enjoy. Okay. Now, is there um, a particular brand or a few particular brands or blends that your customers prefer um, more over some others? Well, if I was to say in the mild, uh, mild range, Mm -hmm. uh, Romeo and Juliet at Reserva Real definitely is one of the top sellers, uh, along with Ashton. Um, if I was to get into fuller body, La Flor Dominicana, and without a doubt, Liga Pravada. Okay. Now, is there a particular blend that you prefer more? Well, that's a dilemma. Okay. Right? I come in the humidor, it's like anything else. If you had a fridge full of a ton of beers, you're going to stand there for about 20 minutes and get ticked off, right? Well, <laughs> I walk in here every day and I look around, look around, look around, and some days I get so confused on my own so I can understand my consumers that I walk out and don't even smoke a cigar. But, you know, typically uh, I enjoy a darker Maduro. Uh, okay. One of my favorites is uh, Hoy de Monterey Prince Otto Oscuro. Uh, it's an awesome cigar. It's actually what I'm smoking now. Um, I'm a big Añejo fan, and I love Liga Pravada and La Florida Medicana. Okay, great. Now, I, I have some interesting information. I've got a little birdie that kind of spoke into my ear, um, saying, that you, <laughs> saying that you've got some, some big things in the works, and that little birdie's name just so happens to be Sindicato. Sindicato. Tell me a little about that. Uh, as much as I can say, uh, right. Sindicato is actually going to be released uh, out at the trade show uh, 2013 out in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, I was approached uh, by some gentlemen that were members of the TA, which I am also, mm -hmm. uh, about they're going to create a cigar company that is going to be by retailers for retailers. And so the manufacturing that we're going to be doing will be sold in all retail brick and mortars. And it's going to be price pointed as such and quality as such that uh, hopefully to take back just a little bit of the industry we've lost. Okay, great. Now for 
the average person that doesn't typically smoke cigars, um, kind of the newbie, what um, blends would you recommend for someone that's just starting off? Well, I'm probably a little bit out of the norm when <laughs> people come in and ask me that question. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot about wine, okay? So, and also uh, bourbon, scotches, and things like that. So, when someone comes in, a lot of times I'll ask one of my clients, what do you drink? And they get caught off guard and they're like, what are you saying? And I'm just like, no, what do you drink? Do you drink beer? Do you drink light beer? Do you drink mm -hmm. dark beers? Do you drink wine, cabs, Merlot, shards? You know, what do you drink? And our palates are all dictated on, uh, uh, you know, what we do on a daily basis. So if you enjoy a big, heavy cab, mm -hmm. instead of starting you out in a very mild cigar, I move you more to medium okay. uh, or medium to full because that's what your palate's used to. You know, if you yourself drink Chardonnay, mm -hmm. I would move you over to either a Connecticut Shade wrapper or something from the medium to mild range. And that's worked 100% and all the time I've been in business. You know, you can also put that with food also. Okay. You know, if, if you're a white sauce pasta eater, you're probably a light uh, light cigar. If you're a big au poivre peppercorn steak guy, mm -hmm. uh, you eat a peppercorn steak and smoke a light cigar, it'll just, you won't even taste a cigar. Hmm. Quick question. The, the color of the wrapper, does that have any effect on the cigar or the flavor at all? Yes and no. If you go by majority, I'd say 70% of the time, mm -hmm. typically a lighter uh, colored wrapper, you would assume would be a lighter smoke. That's not always true. Um, uh, a lot of times there are light smokes out there that if you were a newbie smoker and you grabbed it, they'd knock you down. So, I mean, you really have to rely on your tobacconist to explain. You know, okay. when you walk into a store, you really need to explain to the tobacconist where you are in your cigar smoking. If you're a newbie, you know, or if you are a seasoned smoker and what you smoke. Okay. Because we need your information as much as you need ours. Right. Um, you know, I've had guys that would come in and they've been smoking the exact same cigar for 20 years. Wow. And they sit down at the bar, they have a big Cabernet, and I look at them and say, you're smoking the wrong cigar. Hmm. And they're like, excuse me? And I'm like, you're smoking the wrong cigar. You've been smoking the wrong cigar for 20 years. 20 years. And he goes, no, you are incorrect. So I go in the humidor, I get a cigar, I walk out and I go, here, this is on me. Go home and smoke it. He comes back the next day after a couple expletives, say, okay, you're right. And he ends up changing his flavor profile and he's enjoying cigars more. Wow. You know, just because what we think we like, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's really what our palate dictates. Right. So, Tim, I took notice of something in um, your humidor that you don't typically see in most um, humidors, um, some bloom. Now, if you will, first and foremost, go ahead and explain what bloom is and um, kind of let us know what is it about your humidor that allows um, your cigars to produce some bloom? Well, bloom typically is, uh, it's a part of the aging process. Um, cigars, when they come in, some have the properties and the ability to be able to keep aging uh, uh, through the fermentation process and it creates a what looks like to be a white mold to the average consumer mm -hmm. it's really not uh, mold is either blue or green and if you wipe the cigar bloom will wipe right off it's actually a crystallization okay. um, and actually that's a really good thing I have guys come in and hunt it down in my humidor hmm. they'll literally be hunt down and start moving cigars and everything and go okay I'll take this when they come out and it looks like a bunch of fuzzy cigars, right? And hmm. a lot of consumers come in and tell me, you got mold in your humidor. And I'm like, okay, well then don't smoke them. Because right. I have guys that, that, that hunt it down, right? Mm -hmm. um, as far as the ability that it happens in my humidor, um, I could say it's a trade secret, but honestly, uh, I just think it's the way I built it. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at an example of some bloom on a cigar, that's okay? okay. Okay. All righty. We're going to go ahead and take a look at one of these cigars that actually have some bloom on it. What kind of cigar is this one, Tim? Uh, this is Cubana Limitada by Fonseca. Okay. Um, a lot of times I'll buy cigars and I'll leave them in my back humidor for, depending on how limited it is and stuff, for years. And then bring it out and then the guys get all excited thinking they were gone. Um, but. This is what Bloom looks like. It's sort of, uh, as you can see, it's sort of uh, uh, a white, uh, like little spots. 
It's not blue. It's not green. That's not mold. I actually have a lot of guys that uh, uh, hunt for these cigars in my humidor. They literally hmm. drive up from Atlanta just to find uh, my cigars with bloom on them. And truthfully, the difference in taste between what you would probably classify looking nasty and the beautiful cigars that are next to it, uh, the bloom one tastes better. Hmm. It's actually smoother, creamier, has a lot more flavors in it. Great. Thanks so much, Tim. No problem. Alrighty, everyone, we are back in the cigar shop with Tim. Now, Tim has got an interesting setup here. Um, I absolutely love his cigar shop. One thing that's pretty unique about it, it's got a beautiful wine cellar. But more than that, um, Tim has gone ahead and put a lot of personal time into um, the decor of his shop. Now, Tim, what made you get so personal and put so much personality into your shop? Well, Vanessa, that's not me. Okay, because when my partner and I were building the shop, okay, uh, what had happened is a uh, friend of mine walked in, uh, her name's Angel, uh, she was doing decorating at the time, and she walks in and we're under construction. I mean, the place is a wreck, sawdust all over the place. She walks in and she goes, oh, I heard you guys are building a cigar shop. And I said, yeah. She goes, can I see the plans? Okay, got a piece of paper? So Keith, my partner, draws out these plans. She looks at it and she goes, no, no, this is not gonna happen. She threw us out of the shop. She took it over and she uh, designed it, you know, cause you have different areas, right? With uh, nice seating and everything, different ceiling heights, everything for moods, different colors for moods. You know, game room, this is the leather red uh, walls and mm -hmm. you have a living room looking uh, room up front. Then you have the bar room or this is the game room. And uh, uh, she designed it, she did it all, and we didn't argue because we would lose. And right. so, so if you're asking me how I did it, that would I'd be lying, so I can't say that. So we actually had a decorator, a friend of mine come in and, and handle that for us. Great, that is awesome. Now, I wanna ask you a question in regards to some of the um, laws and, and procedures that go into the cigar industry, um, such as cigar taxes and such forth. Um, how does this affect beautiful shops like yours well it affects everyone equally okay um you know when when you know taxes are taxes we all pay them okay um some people pay more than others some people pay less you know but the tobacco tax for the industry in the state of georgia is 23 percent of wholesale mm -hmm. so if a box cost wholesale a hundred dollars i have to give the government $23 before I sell it. So in, a, in essence, I have $123 in that box. Okay. And laws are changing all the time. Uh, Georgia right now is working on being able to collect tax from all states that ship into Georgia, which, uh, uh, you know, I'm for government getting taxes. That's how we run our country, right? Right. Um, and so if Georgia I, uh, gets taxes from all the other states uh, that ship in, I'm for that also. It will help out the brick and mortar shops. Okay. What do you do? Is there anything that you do in particular to kind of keep your game up in a sense and um, kind of remain competitive with all of the other cigar shops in the area? Well, I do that with my bar. I changed the law in Forsyth County. Um, instead of in Georgia, it's 50% food to 50% alcohol. Mm -hmm. Uh, I changed it to 60% premium hand-rolled cigars to 40% beer and wine. Um, that's with some politicking and, and uh, their understanding that this is a gentleman's place or a lady's place. This is not a bar. But in return to doing, you know, from doing that, I now carry uh, one of the best beer lists. I have 70 different beers, six on tap, a lot of real cool beers. Uh, I have a lot of uh, uh, guys that enjoy beer come quite a distance to come up and get some of the beers I have. Um, and with wine, I have probably one of the top wine lists in the entire state. Now, I'm not as deep as some of the fine restaurants in Atlanta, mm -hmm. where they might have th three to ten cases of something. I might have four bottles. Um, but uh, uh, I have some of the finest wine and hardest and highest rated wines in the world. Wow. 
ranging all the way from 20 a bottle to 10,000 a bottle. Wow, now noticing something interesting here. Um, we've got the wine list, which you typically don't see in a cigar shop. Um, tell me a little bit about some of your finest wines that you've got in your shop. Well, I have a thousand different wines. Okay. Um, it's on premise only. I am not a retailer. I am a bar. Um, you know, some of the finest wines are some of the finest wines in the world. All the first growth wines, Margot, Lafitte, Latour, uh, uh, Baron de Rothschild, a lot, a lot, all the first growths out of uh, uh, France, um, all the top Malbecs of the world. Uh, you go to California, I have all, I have all the big boys. I have uh, Screaming Eagle, which is one of the hardest cabs in the world to get. I have the 100 point uh, uh, 2007. I have uh, all the 100 point Schraders, uh, the Colgans, the Bonds, the Harlands. Uh, you know, those are wines that you have to be on a list to get. Right. And that's very, that's not even close to all the big boys I have. Right. Um, you know, I'll walk you through the wine cellar in a little bit if you'd like. For sure. And I'll show you some of these bottles, but you know, you might look down here and see this, oh wow, that's a big wine. When you can't see the faces of all the ones up here and they're all just as big as that. When you come in here, um, it's very easy to talk to people when they're relaxed. You know, it's not a high stress environment or anything. And, and so when the ladies come in, uh, it's very comfortable. And I think that's why we get a large influx of, uh, uh, female patrons and friends. Great. Now, knowing that there are some negative draws to the industry, what would you like to tell all of the views and everyone um, about the particular industry? Well, if you're talking about smoking, um, I actually have a, uh, an answer to that. Um, everyone says, you know, smoking is bad for your health and everything, right? And, and I, I don't exactly argue that point. Um, but I can tell you the difference between cigarette smoking and cigar smoking verbatim. I know that for a fact. Okay. I, uh, two years ago, I donated a kidney to my brother. And I had to go down and take a humongous three day, 10 hour days physical. They had to make sure I was 100% healthy in order to uh, donate to my brother. Right. Um, at the time I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. They went through all the tests and told me I had to quit smoking for 30 days. And they had to retest my cardiopulmonary and my glow fill test, which was your kidney filtering, right? Mm -hmm. Because smoking two packs a day was not testing correctly. So on my way back from the hospital, I agreed to do this, but on the way back to the hospital, I'm sort of a rebel. So I'm sitting there going, you know, I own a cigar shop. You know, this is a great test market. I smoke three to four cigars a day for that 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, I went in and tested. My cardiopulmonary went up 75%. Wow. My glow fill went from an 82 to a 96. That's the difference between cigars and cigarettes. Wow. So I, could, I actually had one of the sen uh, uh, senators here in the state tell me I ought to sit down and write this all down and supplement it to the government. Uh, with because like, I have all you know all the criteria and everything, mm -hmm. so it was that was interesting. So you know, uh, cigar smoking is very relaxing. Um, if you had a stressful day and you smoke a cigar, uh, it definitely will bring your blood pressure down. Um, I've actually even tested that theory. Um, but uh, uh, is it as bad as cigarette smoking? No, you don't inhale cigar smoke. Is there some right. ambient smoke you might get? Yes, but I've yet to know anyone that's died or gotten cancer from a cigar. And um, cigars are all um, typically made by hand. There aren't any chemicals or... Depends, there's some depends. flavored cigars out there. Okay. I mean, you go Swisher Sweets and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a lot of chemicals. I, you know, those are all short filler. I call them floor sweeping cigars, okay. not a real cigar. But at any rate, uh, most of them are handmade. Uh, no, you know, I'm sure there is some uh, uh, safe pesticides and things they use mm -hmm. down the Dominican Republic, but... Uh, mm -hmm. D typically they are chemical free, yes. Okay, now, I've got a silly question for you. Oh, here we go. <laughs> if you could um, talk to the cigar genie and kind of uh, rub that little jar there um, and make a wish, 
what would you ask um, of that cigar genie? What would you improve in regards to your shop or the cigar industry in itself? So it has to be related to cigars. I can't ask for anything else? No. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Well, if I was to ask the cigar genie something, that's funny, you didn't preempt me on this one. This really isn't fair. Um, I would, uh, I would have to say fair play. I would have to say across the board that everybody is equal from mail distribution to brick and mortars to purchasing of cigars. You know, um, you know, there are higher realms that you're able to get certain cigars and things like that. I think that you earn, right? Right. But as far as being able to equally price, say the state of Georgia versus uh, uh, Florida, no tax Florida, 23% Georgia. Level playing field would be great. And the sad part is, is our gov governments don't realize that sales tax would increase. We would create more sales if we we're able to do that. But you know, that's not my, I haven't met the genie yet. Right, is there anything that you would improve in regards to your own shop? Less hours. <laughs> I mean, I work about 70 hours a week. Um, no, actually, I really enjoy everything. I enjoy the people. It's good. I have great employees, and uh, uh, I enjoy the industry. Okay. So I've got an interesting question, Tim. I know um, for a lot of us women, we kind of have the perception that cigar lounges only cater to men. Now, you've got a beautiful setup. Your ambiance in here is, just, is so relaxed and so gorgeous. Do you get... Um, good influx of women coming through and, and just trying to relax, have a glass of wine? That's funny you ask that. Um, probably about 40%. Wow. I have, uh, uh, you know, not only did I build this over here, which is smoking, which some people don't smoke, and I, I realize that. I'm a cigar shop, right? That's why in the, the room next door, I opened up Smoke Free. It's non-smoking in the wine side bar, right? And so then also out on the patio, you can smoke and you're out in open air. Right. Is there um, anything that you would want um, those viewing um, our audience to kind of get out of this sit down that we've had today? Well, if you get anything, uh, I would have to say that, you know, come in, sit down, enjoy the environment. I mean, I have guys that have never smoked a cigar before that I've talked to in a restaurant or something and I invite them in. And they come in with a couple friends and they sit down and and relax and have a cigar, a glass of wine. You know, this is this isn't about smoking. This is about relationships. Mm -hmm. This is about one-on-one uh, 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 -on -one or friends. You know, it's like having a great right. bottle of wine. You can sit at home and drink a great bottle of wine by yourself, but it's not a great bottle of wine unless you enjoy it with someone right. you care about or a friend. You know, same thing with a cigar. We all sit down, we, you know, we relax, and it's fun, we talk. We solve the world's issues every single day in here, right? I tell you, I could be president tomorrow, and so could he, and so could he, and so could he, everybody, right? And we come in and solve the world's issues on a daily basis. Great, well, I thank you so much. I, I know the audience has enjoyed the show. Now, we've got a little treat that we've been promised, and we're gonna go into the beautiful wine cellar. Um, and Tim is going to give us a, a little glimpse as to the beautiful wines that he's got in there and the great selections. I am super thrilled. I'm here with Tim, owner of The Cigar Shop. We're in the wine cellar. Now, Tim, tell me um, about some of the um, various selections that you've got here. What are some of the favorites that you've got? Well, I have wines from all over the world. Um, Chile, uh, France, Italy, Germany, uh, United States, you name it. I have some of the top wines in the world. Uh, I've just set a few out here. Um, this is only a couple of them. Uh, like uh, this Chateau Margaux, this is uh, a first growth out of uh, Bordeaux. Okay. Um, one of the top five wines in the world in that region. Uh, then you have Screaming Eagle, one of the hardest cabs in the world to lay your hands on. This actually happens to be a hundred pointer. Um, the Schraders, are a big cab out of California and that in Napa that also is a hundred point wine um, Gaia one of the top Italian wines in the world 
and uh, uh, Chateau Petrus and anyone that knows wine, I don't even need to explain that. Right. Um, what are some of your um, number one sellers in the shop? Well, I have such an eclectic collection, a thousand different wines and all the top wines of the world. So having a best seller is, is hard because I have people come in from all walks of life. You know, a lady might want to come in and get a Pinot Grigio by the glass and a gentleman might, or a lady might want to come in and get a, uh, a hundred point cap. You know, the difference mm. is, is the glass might be $6. A wine, a bottle of wine could be up to 10,000. Wow. What would you say, in your opinion, do the ladies enjoy the most in regards to wine? Well, that's tough. Uh, if you're saying an average, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of ladies enjoy a lighter wine, uh, perhaps a Pinot Grigio, a Chardonnay, mm -hmm. a Fumé Blanc. Um, but I have a lot of ladies that really enjoy a nice cab or a Merlot or Chateau Neuf du Pop. I have, it's all over the board. What would you say is one of your favorites? My favorite? I can tell you what my favorite cab is. Okay. I've drank in every one of these wines. My favorite cab, absolutely 100% is O'Shaughnessy <laughs> Mount Beater, hmm. uh, which last year's happened to get 100 points. It's an incredible, incredible wine. That's my favorite Cabernet. Great. Um, I absolutely love and adore the design that you've got in here, your style. What made you kind of go this route, the style? Again, my decorator. Okay. <laughs> she is awesome. Yeah. All righty. Um, that is it. I thank everyone out there. I hope you enjoy the show. Again, this is um, Tim with The Cigar Shop and Vanessa Texera. Have a great day.